Now let's summarize. Um, let's talk about like how perfect is MRI, even in at NIH, where yeah. you're considered the reference center yeah. for high quality in the U.S. Um, if you were doing MRIs on everybody before a biopsy, how many how many important cancers? Are you going to really miss realistic? Well, our published rates of uh, cancers that are not detected on the MRI is fifteen percent, around fifteen percent, and that's been reproduced in multiple. Studies. Some centers, especially overseas, claim they have a much lower false negative rate. Well, we saw that. We saw that with. I mean, Hodgson and Dickey published this paper in JAMA on their results, and then we saw the results of other large prospective trials in Europe, and there's. The our rates of clinically detecting and clinically significant cancer were higher than other centers. Um, Did you guys look at the fifteen percent to see what other markers, like PSA density, could have picked up that fifteen percent? Well, that's probably the area we're most interested in right now. What we have is we have a uh, every patient who gets a prostatectomy at the NIH gets their prostate removed and has it put into a hole mount. And that whole mount can, can be mapped back to the MRI, and um, that it turns out that process, how exactly do you guys do that? Well, it's difficult. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, in the past, it, it sounds like it would be a cognitive, just like like we can set up yeah. something like this and sort of say, well, looking at the whole mount, the disease is here, and yeah. then like just that's, a visual that's acquisition. Ba that's basically how we've done it in the past. We are moving to a to a point now where we're actually doing it using um, trigger points and, a, and an actual registration process. Because when you take the prostate out of the body, formal and fix it, it changes its shape. So now we're doing formal registration um, using a deformed registration algorithm and tracing various landmarks on, on the, both the prostate and the whole map to do a very good registration to see exactly where these areas are. And we're specifically most well, we're, one of the areas we're most interested in is these MRI negative lesions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just say that there is a publication that may provide some light on that coming out soon, we hope. Are we going to be really intrigued by the results? I think so. It's nothing. We're doing it on a pure pathology basis right now, um, just where the lesions are and, and where the architectures are. We haven't gotten into the, the molecular biology as much yet, but that's certainly an interesting area. Let's talk about the reproducibility of pyrads from one radiologist yes. to the another, yeah. to another. Yeah. And when you talk about outlining the lesion, tell us how you would construct a little study or how they've constructed studies to compare inter-observer pyrad ratings. Well, this is so. Let's say you have very high quality images, such as your images here in Cumberland. Now, now, how do you um, now how do you assess the risk of, of assigned to each PIRAT score? What people have shown in multiple uh, multi-reader studies is that that's very variable. There's a very nice study out of Stanford by um, Dr. Sum that demonstrated a 50% variability in PIRATS five lesions. So PIRATS is a, is a Likert score from one to five, with one being a very low should be a very low risk of clinically significant cancer, all the way up to five, which should be a very high risk of clinically significant cancer. But what he showed is some of his radiologists a PIRATS five meant you were going to have a 90%, whereas some radiologists it was a 40%. So and. and you know that variability has been is is real, and well, then that would make me challenge the whole PIRAD system. If it's not reproducible to a better degree than that, then they need to come up with a better methodology okay. to call one five and one four. Correct? Yeah. Or we need to have computers do this for us. Well, <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this. I mean, I think. That variability is less among experts, you know. So, what is an expert? There's, and I, I think there can be some efforts that are done in that regard. So, I just saw a very nice um, effort out of Australia uh, to have an online training system where you can go through and, and images come up and you give the pirate score. MRI Pro. Yeah, MRI Pro, and um, uh, I think that's one potential way to to assist with this. In my opinion, though, 
uh, a Pyreds is kind of like a PSA. You you know some information about it, hopefully. So, for example, in your practice here, you have very few radiologists reading your your scan. So, just one, yeah. So, so if it's always just one, then you know, then you can study that, and you know what your rates of clinically significant cancer are by Pyreds. And that may be a little different here than other other centers. And I, I don't think that's a problem as long as it's, it's consistent. consistent. For the center, we're always calling a four or four and a five to five. Right. So if, if so, if your fives here have consistently an eighty percent chance of having clinically significant cancer, and that's been, you know, that's been true for quite some time, that's pretty good. Then you know what that is. You know what that risk is. The problem is, is if you had three people reading it, and one was forty, one was eighty, and and they changed based on the day. That's a that's a more challenging problem. Um, so it's the internal consistency of the individual that I think makes more of a difference than necessarily um, exact agreement across readers. That being the case, the in the best scenarios, the agreeder, the uh, inter agreeder reader agreement is about moderate. So that is, a, we think that that's a problem. We do. We understand that that's an issue, and we are developing AI systems to help solve that problem. We do think that there is a role for. Uh, a computer-based method for pirates. Um, the criticism we got was, which was kind of funny, was that, um, well, if we can predict pirates, why can't we just predict cancer? The answer is some of the some of the lesions are just aren't visible on MRI, so we're not going to be able to predict all cancers. Um, so we think so. We are developing uh, that as a method, um, and we made some progress. We're not there yet. It's a, it's a pretty challenging problem because it is it is a four dimensional data problem. You have uh, the x, y, and z dimensions, and then multiple um, parameters. Uh, but we 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 started to see some some pretty good signal in some of our AI models that we're developing. So we're hopeful. So hopefully that will bring a methodology that has some standardization. The nice thing about computers is um, whereas they may not be perfect in terms of their, their ability to reproduce humans. They are perfect in their ability to reproduce themselves, um, which humans struggle with. Okay. The same radiologist can look at this, an image multiple times and, on different days and sometimes give different answers. Computers don't do that. Computers at least are, are, are consistent with that regard.